So let's get down to some code. Uh, this is a, a programming module, and so we need to uh, get to grips with the code. This is the basic structure of a servlet. We'll ignore the first three lines for now and go straight to line five. When we're defining our Java class, we'll do it as a, an ordinary Java class, public class, and then some name. You give it whatever name you want. And then we make it a subclass by using the extends keyword. So we make it a subclass of HTTP servlet. This is a class that is in the javax.servlet.http package. And therefore, we need to do this import on line three. As soon as we've written those two words, extends HTTP servlet, we have made this class a servlet class. And through the rules of inheritance, we have immediately inherited all those methods that are necessary to make this servlet work on the server. You see, on the server, there is what's called a servlet container. And that is essentially another program that runs and knows how to talk to servlets. If we make our class a servlet and drop that into the servlet container, it will already have all the necessary methods for the container and the, our new servlet to talk to each other. What we have to do then is to override those inherited methods that we're interested in. One of the inherited methods is the doGet method, which, which we can see on lines 15 to 19. When an HTTP GET request is received by the server, and it finds that the servlet is present, then the servlet container will call the doGet method. If, on the other hand, the HTTP request is a POST request, then the servlet container will call the doPost method. So it depends on what kind of request comes in as to which one of those two methods will be called. Typically, we'll want to do exactly the same kind of processing whichever type of request we've received. And so normally, and you'll find this with NetBeans, normally what we would do is to create our own method, something like process request, and then in doGet and in do post, we'll just call that method process request. And that way, we're only writing once the code to process the request. There are other uh, what we call lifecycle methods, such as destroy. We might talk about those in another lecture at some point. The only things we're really interested in are the do post and do get at this point. What we're going to do is look at, it, at an example of a get request. Now, when we have a get request, there are certain things involved. Remember I said right at the beginning that we need to provide a link for the user to click to send the request for that servlet. And that link has got to be part of an HTML display. We will have an HTML file. That HTML file might just have a link, a hyperlink, that will have uh, the servlet's address. Or we might have an HTML form, which when submitted will then send in the data that's associated with that form. Just using a hyperlink on its own means that we can't really uh, send in any data. It's just a, a link. So if we have any data to send in, it might be, for example, the username uh, and password, or it might be uh, address and date of birth and things like that, then we would need to put that inside an HTML form. And what you can see on screen here is an example of an HTML form. We're guaranteeing that the request made is an HTTP GET request because we've got the attribute method equals GET. The other attribute here on this form tag is ACTION. And we make that equal to the URL of the servlet that we want to execute. Now, in this very simple example, what we've got is a little paragraph telling the user what they need to do. So just single click the button. Then we have an input tag which gives us or tells us that this is a submit type and that means it's going to be a button and the value which is the text that is going to be displayed on the face of the button is click here and so when that button is displayed on the on the web browser screen by clicking on there it will send an http get request to the nominated servlet so that provides the functionality for the user to request the servlet to execute one of the things I want to point out here, or re-emphasize, is the fact that what we're putting here is not the name of the servlet class. 
we're using the URL of the servlet, and that's quite an important concept, and we'll come back to that. By some mechanism that we'll discuss another time, the URL of the servlet, which is sent to the server, is decoded so that the server then works out exactly which servlet class to execute. And in our example, the servlet class that we're going to execute is this one here, the doGet servlet. It extends HTTP servlet, as we had before. We've got a private method here that is called getTime and returns a string. And the way that it works on line 9 is to get from the system the current time as a number of milliseconds. The way this works is that every date is calculated as a number of milliseconds since midnight on the 1st of January 1970. One millisecond after midnight on that day has the value 1. Two milliseconds has got the value 2. One second after midnight has got the value 1,000. One minute after midnight has got the value 60,000 and so on. So now, a few decades later, you can imagine that that number, that integer, is now very, very big. And so we can't store that value in an integer. We need to use the data type long. And what we're doing next in lines 10, 11, and 12 is extracting from that very big number of milliseconds since midnight on the 1st of January 1970, the number of seconds of the current minute then the number of minutes in the current hour, and then the number of hours in the current day. So that we get today's current time as hours, minutes, and seconds. And we format this, there we are, the variables, HH, hours, MM, minutes, SS, seconds, separated by colons, but we want to make sure that there are two digits for each number. And so we test if HH is less than 10, then we need to have a zero. Otherwise, we don't need anything. And then the value of hours. So let's say hours was 8. Then this would say, true, hours is less than 10. So we're going to put into the string a 0, 8. On the other hand, if hours is 11, this is going to be false. And so we'll output nothing followed by 11. So there's always going to be two digits for the hours two digits for the minute, two digits for the seconds, separated by colons, returned as a string to whoever calls this method. Well, let's look at the doGet method for this servlet. A couple of things that we need to note about doGet, and indeed this is true of doPost, there are two parameters, the HTTP servlet request and HTTP servlet response. These two objects are given to the servlet by the servlet container. So the servlet container will take that HTTP request that came from the client, the web browser, and will decode it into its individual bits and pieces, and then will construct one of these HTTP servlet request objects, putting into the object all the information that it has about that request that came from the web browser. Likewise for the response object, and then both the request object and the response object are sent as parameters to this method when it's called. So that by the time we start executing, we have got available all the request information and the response information that we need. So on line 23, for example, we can declare this variable of type print writer, which will allow us to write text, and we make it equal to the responses output stream. That's what get writer gives us. So essentially, it now, we have now got a direct link back to the web browser. And any text that we write using that variable will go back to the web browser. So we've now got a channel open so that whatever our program outputs will be sent to the web browser and the web browser can use it. Because the web browser is going to be operating on HTML, we're going to send it some information. For example, the, the result object dot set content type allows us then to say this is HTML in the form of text. And then we need to send it some text. Because it's expecting HTML, we need to make sure that our text is properly formatted HTML. 
And so you get, for example, on line 25, the HTML tag, and then a new line, and then the head tag, and then a title tag, and then the end title, end head, then the body tag with the background color, and so on. Now you'll notice with this one on line 29 that what we want to do is to have a double quote embedded within our string. And to achieve that, what we have to do is to use the backslash in front of that embedded double quote. And that will then interpret this double quote as part of the string rather than as the end of the string that was started here. And that makes it a little bit awkward. And it's going to be awkward every time we talk about this with servlets. But when we get onto Java server pages, we'll resolve that awkwardness. The way we send these messages, having set up the output variable on line 23, we're then able to do things like output.println. Now, if you've written any Java programs before, then you're familiar with using system.out.print, system.out.println, system.out.printf. And you can use those same methods with output, this print writer. If you know how to send uh, messages using system.out, then you know how to use print writer too, because it's exactly the same. So what we're doing is sending out lots of messages containing HTML text. And right down here on line 35, we're embedding a method call to the method that we were looking at just a few moments ago on the previous screen, the getTime method that is going to get the current time and construct a string that shows the current time. That comes back here as a string, which is then catenated to the other part of the message. And so what will be output on the web browser is the current time right now. Then when the request is refreshed, you get the current time right then. And then again and again. And so it will illustrate very nicely the dynamic nature of the servlet because every time the servlet executes, it gets a fresh value and that fresh value is sent back to the web browser.